Mike Wells here, STEM Mastering Applied. We will break this segment into three components. One, mix analysis. Here we will learn what we want to address and what we want to preserve. From there, we will go into the STEM's processing and tackle each STEM, applying compression, limiting EQ, where we need to, to arrive at our result of stereo processing. We will sum the STEMs together and process that stereo file to create our finished master. Let's jump into mix analysis. So the first thing I'm gonna do, like any mastering engineer, is check out the mix. We have some notes from the producer. Let's give it a quick listen, and we'll talk about the feedback that we received. Some things that we notice right away, we have a very large dynamic range in this mix. They gave me a reference that they wanted me to consider as far as target loudness goes, which is very competitive. So right away, we know that there's a lot of heavy lifting that's gonna be needed in the compression and limiting department to get this mix up to competitive standards. So what we're gonna do now is just take a limiter, strap it across the mix, and crank it up to what we're gonna need for commercial gain and see what happens. some things right away. A lot of distortion. Why? We're doing 13 dB of dynamic range reduction here. That is a profound amount of compression and limiting happening right there. Other things we notice right away are the low mids really start to crowd. They start to build up. We're also hearing complete loss of transient attack. The definition and the punch of the track has disappeared. What do we want to preserve? Well, the vocal is the main instrument. We also notice that the drums are very pronounced, but by smashing it, we really lose a lot of the power of the drums. Lastly, the instruments that are in the background, like the guitar and the bass, even with this heavy-handed limiting, they're staying put relative to everything else, and that's pretty cool. That's good to know. So the next thing I'm going to do is, guess what? Master the stereo mix. Why? By mastering the stereo mix first and going back to the client, the artist, the mixer, the producer, and getting everybody's approval with the stereo master, that provides the roadmap of what you're going to do with your stem decisions to not only meet what you've done in the stereo master, but completely beat it and deliver something far superior. So let's check out what I did with the stereo master. This was approved by the client and the producer and gave us the path on what to do with the stems. This gives us a lot of great information. We have everybody on the same page on what the goal is. We understand where the top end is going to land. We have an idea of what compression is going to do and how we can improve upon that with the stem process. We've defined more in the low mids. We've created that polish on the top. This gives us the guidepost to move forward with stems and also a way to avoid jumping into a remixing situation. When I think about EQ changes in the stem process, we were talking about how much gain we needed to achieve here, right? So that's going to be a lot of compression, a lot of limiting. We can do that a number of ways. The way I like to think of it in the stem process is what I call making space. So we can use parametric EQ, shelving EQ, dynamic EQ, multiband compression, compression, you name it. But the idea here is to look at where frequencies of different instruments are going to overlap when you bring them up to commercial gain through the mastering process. You're making space for that primary instrument to stay primary instead of having everything compete for it as the mix comes up. So in this situation, we're looking at the drums. After I soloed everything, I found out that between 160 and 200, that's where the buildup is happening. It's in the ringing of the toms and the room sound of the drums. It's in a couple of notes in the bass guitar, and it's in a bit of the guitar overall with the reverb that's on the guitar. So we jump into the drums. I'm doing a bit of parametric EQ here, and I'm doing some compression and some limiting. And so what I want to play for you here is just the drum stem, and then the drum stem going through its stem processing as well. We'll go back and forth so you can hear each. Mm -hmm. 
We have reduced the dynamic range quite a bit, yet we're still maintaining a lot of snap. We have a lot more shine in the drum kit. We're bringing out more room sound because of the compression we're applying, but we're compensating for that with some EQ as well to kind of keep it clean. And when the other instruments come in, as you'll hear with the finished master, they're not colliding in that low mid area. So that's what we're doing with the drums. Let's move on to the bass. When I took a look at the bass, along with the other elements of the mix, I was noticing that between 160 and 200, that's where the frequency buildup is really happening. So I strapped a dynamic EQ around that and that keeps those two notes in place. That allows the other instruments that share that primary space, in this case, the vocal, to really shine and the bass is no longer competing with it. Outside of that, bringing it out into the analog domain, giving it some really nice conversion and a set of really great transformers really opened it up and made it pop. So check this out. First, you're gonna hear the bass stem from the mix and then you're gonna hear the bass stem with the master processing on it. We're gonna go back and forth here. A lot more clarity in the harmonics of the bass. It's richer, it's fuller, and certainly you can feel more width out of it as well. Let's move on to the guitars. The guitars sound great. They're not really getting in the way of anything. However, we get a little bit of puffing out and blooming around 300. So I've got a half a dB tuck around 300 at a parametric EQ. And again, out in the analog domain, going through a beautiful set of transformers. So you're really gonna hear this baby open up. So let's do a little bit of back and forth here. You can hear the mix stem and then the mastered stem. <laughs> more polish. Everything's very smooth. It really opens up and is really creamy and really makes the whole dreamy effect even more dreamy. The last element we have here as a stem is the vocal. The work we've done with the other stems has allowed us to really just let the vocal be the vocal. It's the primary instrument. It's the focus of the mix. We just get to let this guy come through. Not only do we get to let it come through, it's going through a tube compressor, it's handling its compression out there in the analog domain. It sounds beautiful. It's lush, it opens up, it's fantastic. Check this out. You're gonna hear the vocal stem out of the mix and then you're gonna hear the vocal stem going through its mastering. Once upon a time I met someone Someone close to me not someone I used to know. Huge. All of that breath coming out. So much detail happening. Compressor's keeping it right in place, but with the EQ moves and the compression moves that we've done to the other instruments and gain management, we can let the vocal be the vocal. It can be right there in the mix. Now let's sum all these guys together with our summing mixer and check out what we're going to do in the stereo domain. I want to take a step back and talk a little bit about what we're doing here in the analog domain again. And you're hearing the results and you're hearing how huge, big, wide, spacious, deep everything is becoming. This is a testament to the conversion that you're using and being in the analog domain. We're choosing devices to make these decisions at the stem level so we can minimize what we're gonna do when we go to stereo. Each stem receives its processing as we see fit, compression, limiting, EQ. All of the stems then arrive at the two bus plus, our summing mixer, sum them down to a stereo signal. And then where does it go from there? We pass it to my mastering console where I have my regular insert set up for stereo processing. If we take a step back and think about what I did to the stereo master to create our original master that got approved, I was doing dynamic EQ, multiband compression, compression, limiting, parametric EQ to get all that, right? Because we needed to solve all of those issues to arrive at a good master. And it was a great master. What we're doing now at the stereo level is two things, the dangerous compressor and the dangerous Bax EQ. The dangerous compressor is a great choice for this track in this context because now that I've done all my work with stems, I want a light touch. It's got a great musicality, but it doesn't get in the way. The Bax, all it does is shine. I always have it at the end of my signal chain. I'm gonna play a couple files for you here. I'm gonna start off with the stem master. I want you to hear how huge this thing is. I want you to hear how much we've achieved in this. And you're gonna hear it when I switch back to the approved stereo master. You're gonna hear how much goes away and that's gonna show you how much we were able to achieve. I'm gonna start off with the stem master. I'm gonna to go to the approved stereo master. 
back to the approved STEM master. Once upon a time, I met someone, someone who loves me, not someone Incredible stuff here. Listen to that image. Listen to that power, that punch, that definition, that clarity. It's huge. Think about where we started in the first video in this series, talking about what is STEM mastering and why would you want to do it. You're hearing the why. You heard what we achieved by just slamming it up. You heard the challenges that we had to deal with. Now you're hearing the results and the power that this process can bring to a master. You can hear all these files at the Dangerous Music SoundCloud page. You can find a link to that page in the description of this video. I want to take a moment to thank Dangerous Music for making this video series possible and also for making the tools that make this process possible. Thank you to the band Hard Youth for making their track available and thank you for watching.